Hey, hey, and welcome to our next lesson video, evaluating rational exponents. So rational exponents are really cool. All of your property of exponents still apply, but instead of integer exponents, we're gonna be looking at fraction exponents. So I can hear you all jumping up and down right now. I know you're so excited, um, but they're pretty cool. So let's just talk about how can you even have a fraction for an exponent? What does it even mean? Um, so fraction exponents have to do with radicals. Um, so we have some technical verbiage here. If a is a real number and n is an integer, where n is greater than one, so it's any number, two, three, four, any number bigger than um, one, the, and if the nth root of a exists, then we define uh, the fractional exponent to be 1 over n. Now, the part where it says the nth root exists, remember, we've had some examples from our last lesson video, so like the fourth root of negative 16. Remember, this had no solution um, because the root was even and the index was a 4, so that's even, and underneath the house was a negative. So this did not exist. So that's why they threw that sentence in there. If it exists, um, then we can do this. Now, 1 over n, where do they even come up with this fraction? Well, if you look over to the right, I have this little picture that says power over root, and that kind of says it all. Uh, the root here is n. We're taking the nth root. So that's why n is on the bottom power over root. But how did they come up with the one? Well, remember when uh, you don't see a power, it's understood to be an exponent of one? That's all that happened here. That's why it's a one on top. So I just want to go through a few examples here of what to do to, to convert it to a rational exponent. So let's just start simple and we'll work our way up. Uh, obviously, we're going to have x as the base. Uh, but what's the power? What's the root? The power's on top. The power is a 3. The root is the index, which is a 5. So as a rational exponent, we would say this expression is equivalent to x to the 3 fifths power. Now, this middle one, uh, obviously we would have x. And we can see that the power is a 3, but what is the root? Now, a lot of times I get students tell me the root is 1. However, when we're talking about a radical, okay, think about what this index is understood to be when we don't see it. This is a square root house, a square root. So it's understood to actually be a root of 2. So we would say the fraction is x to the 3 halves power. Okay. Now, the second one, notice it's written differently. On the first two examples, the power of 3 was under the root house. In this example, it's outside. And I did this to tell you it doesn't matter which way it's written. A power is a power and the root is still the index. So we're still going to do the same thing. This time we're dealing with a z. The power this time is on the outside, but regardless, it's a power. More specifically, it's a power of 4. And the index tells us the root is 7. So we would write this as z to the 4 sevenths power. OK, so the key here is power over root. And I'm stressing that. I even put in another slide here. The numerator is the power. The denominator is the root. That's really the key to rational exponents. So just don't forget that, and you will be fine. Well, so let's do a quick how-to session. Um, how would you evaluate this? If I asked you to give me a single number as an answer for this expression, what the heck would you do? Well, here would be my suggestion. First, convert it, OK? Convert it to <clears throat> its radical form. So go backwards from what we just did on those previous examples. Take this, and remember that 2 is the power, and 3 is the root, and rewrite this as 8 under a radical symbol. They want us to take the cube root, so the little index is a 3, and our power will be a 2. Okay? Now, once you've done that, work 
inside, that would be my next suggestion. So inside the parentheses, we're going to deal with the cube root of 8. Now, the previous night's video lesson was evaluating radicals. So remember, we talked about just doing a factor tree if you want to. So I'm going to factor tree the 8, and I'm looking for sets of 3 of a number. So 8, I'm going to go with the pair 4 times 2 and my 4 breaks down to 2 times 2. Now here's my set. I have a set of 3 2's. Remember this little number tells me how many goes in the set, the little index of 3. So what this means is I have a set of 2. So a 2 would come outside of the cube root house. But nothing is left over, so 8 is a perfect cube, and uh, 2 would be the value of the cube root of 8. And the house goes away because it's a perfect cube. So instead of having cube root of 8, I now just have a 2 that I'm going to square. And so hopefully you all know 2 squared would just be a 4. All right. So 8 to the 2 thirds power is simply 4. Okay, let's look at another one. So these few examples are really hitting our learning target where we're evaluating expressions with rational exponents. Um, this is the meat and potatoes to what we're needing to do in this video. So the same thing I'm going to do again, I'm going to convert it first. All right, Convert it back to its radical form. So remember, 4 is the power. Think about the picture. 3 is the root, so let me draw my radical symbol with a 64 underneath. The root was a 3, that's my little index, and I'm going to raise this to a power of 4. Now, if you want to, again, do a factored tree for 64. Um, it's going to be a little bigger. Let's see, um, I'm going to go with 8 and 8, and then I'm going to go with 4 and 2. So just keep breaking down as much as you can. I'll try to go as, as quick as I can so my computer keeps up with me. All right, cool beans. My factor tree is done. Now remember the little index tells you how many you need to form a set. So I need three of something to have a set. So, well, by golly, there's a set. And holy cats, here's another set. Oh my gosh, I've got two sets of twos. So what does that mean? That means <clears throat> from each set, a 2 comes out. So I'm going to have a 2 from the set on the left and a 2 from the set on the right. Remember, we multiply them when they come out. Now, if you look at your factor tree, there's nothing left. The 8s and the 4s, we broke them down even more. So we used all of our factors here, um, and they all paired up into our sets. So this cube root house is going to go away again. Okay, it's going to reduce to 2 times 2, and remember once we do that, whoops, I don't want that extra mark there, we're going to raise it to the fourth power. Let's just fix all that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in the parentheses, 2 times 2 is a 4, and that still has to be raised to the fourth power. Now, you can type this in your calculator, 4 to the fourth uh, is going to give us a 256. So the expression 64 to the 4 thirds power would simplify to simply 256. All right, we just got a couple more here. Uh, ooh, I've got a negative power. So think about our property of exponents that we've been working with for the last week, okay? For the past week, whenever you have a negative exponent, it means to shoot your term across the fraction bar. So here's what we're going to do. 25 needs to go to the bottom, and now its power turns positive. However, once we moved it, the top was empty, so we fill it with a 1. Now, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to convert, except the only thing different, it's at the bottom of a fraction. Okay, but we're still going to do the same thing. Remember, 3 is the power, 2 is the root, so when I convert its form, I'm going to have a, a radical with a little index of 2 because that's the root. 25 goes under my house, 
And we're going to take this and we're going to raise it to the third power because the power is a 3. All right. Here we go. So inside, uh, I need to do the square root of 25. So hopefully, oh my goodness, I hope you have that one memorized. But I'll still do my factor tree. Because the index is a 2, I need 2 of something to have a set. So obviously I have two fives. So the square root of 25 is a five. We need to cube that five. And I believe five cubed is um, 125. So as a final answer, 25 to the negative 3 halves power is simply 1 over 125. OK? So the key here, just remember, if you have a negative exponent, we want to flip same rule applies as our property of exponents, okay? I've got one more to show you. Oh my goodness, we've got a fraction raised to a fraction power. Yikes! It's okay, don't be scared. It's not that bad, okay? Let's convert first, okay? Since I don't have a negative exponent, I'm not flipping or anything. So I'm just gonna convert to radical form. So I'm gonna draw a big radical because I've got to put 64 over 125 inside of it. Whoa, mammoth. Okay. Now, the fraction, the fractional exponent, the power is 2, the root is 3. So we're going to put the little 3 as the index, and we're going to take this whole big thing, and eventually we're going to square it when we're ready. Okay. Now, if you remember the previous uh, night's homework, evaluating radicals, we looked at when you have a fraction that you're trying to take the root of. What did we do? Remember, the property of radicals lets you break it up, okay? Cube root of 64 on top, cube root of 125 on the bottom, okay? So all of this, once we figure each of those out separately, we're going to square it. So the cube root of 64, um, for the sake of space, I'm going to let you do your factor tree. Um, maybe you would use 8 and 8 again. Actually, I feel like we've already did the cube root of 64 somewhere on here. Uh, what you would get, you would have a 4. I'm sure you'd have two sets of 2's that would come out and you'd multiply to a 4. Um, I guess I could real quick, since we haven't done this one yet in the video, I could do a factor tree for 125. Um, 5 times 25, and 25 would break down 5 and 5. And again, because it's an index of 3, um, I need 3 to make a set. So there's my set. Uh, so that means a 5 would come out. Okay, and then we're going to square this. Now, property of exponents, remember, we're used to seeing variables in here, and we're used to distributing that power of 2 to both the top and bottom. Uh, this is just a little awkward because we're just dealing with numbers, which we haven't done with. Our examples have been a little harder, but it's the same idea. We're going to square 4 and we're going to square 5. We're going to distribute the square to each part. So we're going to simply end up with 4 squared is 16, not 8. <laughs> and 5 squared is 25, 5 times 5, not 5 times 2. <laughs> All right. Some of you are still wanting to do that. Um, but we'll, we'll get that fixed, hopefully. So this is, this is our answer. The fraction 64 over 1 25th, if you take that and raise it to the 2 thirds power, it looks super messy and it would be really hard, but, you know, it wasn't that bad. It was doable. It came out to 16 over 25. Okay? So that concludes my examples for you. Here are our preview problems for next class that I will check. Um, notice you have one positive uh, rational exponent and one negative. So if you need to flip back through some of the previous slides, that's OK. Uh, but that completes our learning target of evaluating expressions with rational exponents. Keep learning, guys, and come to class prepared. Have your preview problems ready at the beginning of class and any questions that you might have. All right, so have fun, and I'll see you next time.